continue it tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. as we continue our coverage. It's the 2009 U-Triple-S-A Men's Major World Series presented by Bush Light, and it's brought to you tonight by Worth. Resmondo and TNR Stucco doing battle, and Jason Branch leading things off. Andy Purcell, the pitcher tonight for Resmondo, specialty tank Worth. There's a called strike. Great crowd on hand. Enjoyed the home run derby. And there is out number one. Baker up the middle with the grab. They get up branched just at first base. There's one away now for Mitch Mabe. And Mitch Mabe will come to the plate with one away. Rick Robertson, who you just saw down on the field, will join us momentarily. And Mabe takes a look at the first pitch. It's a cold strike. And Mabe, fly ball to right, that's a base hit. And so that's Maybe the first base the runner of the ball game for TNR Stucco. Winner of this game takes Maddox. on Long Haul. Maddox, they took down the Dan Smith earlier in extra innings. A little bit of controversy in that contest. But at the end of the day, it's the Long Haul Bombers that have advanced. There's a cold strike. Back up the middle, off Andy Purcell. They throw to second for one, to first. And that is an inning ending double play. Half an inning in the books. Purcell, Number one C, the Resmondo Specialty Tank World Squad comes to the plane when we come back. And they turn the double play racing the hit by name. So Stucco goes quietly here in the first. They score none, they strand none, they collect one hit. We go to the home half of the first for Didonatus, Cannell and Wallace. Let's introduce the Stucco defensive alignment as they take the field. Their pitcher is Oscar Shipley. His battery mate is Dustin Roberts. Down at first is Rich Goulash. The second baseman is Mitch Mayne. The third baseman is Brian Arnold. And the shortstop is Tim Maddox. Through the outfield at left is Johnny Dutch. The center fielder is Jason Branch. The right fielder is Brent Griffin. And the middle infielder is Randall Poplin. That's the one they just done for me. That's just a, that's just a mayhem. It pretty much seven, seven, five. I mean, it's balanced. Leading things off for Resmondo Specialty Tank here in the home half. Don DiDonatus will lead things off Don for Resmondo Specialty Tank. We're in this year's series on the power of one home run. He has driven in two. Hey, let's go, Rondo! It's the bottom of the first. And Don DiDonatus with an extra base hit. This one into the corner. And DiDonatus is going to come around to score the first run of the ball game. Such a ball. Look at the speed. Junior and inside the park. Home run. He literally paints the right field line. The ball rattles in the corner, and he scampers all around inside the park. Home run for DiDonatus, his second round trip ticket. So Don DiDonatus with an inside the park home run. The bases are clear for Greg. 
Connell. Connell batting four of eight. He's got two homers and four driven in. And Greg Connell at the plate. Greg Connell at the plate. Bouncing ball to third. And that's out number one. With a pick up and throw. He Got to work on Don DiDonatus and his, Canel. or excuse me, Dave DiDonatus and his directing skills there. The the first for catcher Jeff So Wallace. one away and Jeff Wallace is at the plate. Wallace. Six, After Greg six, Connell seven, year, was retired, 18 oh, runs. He's in the first, that's what Resmondo scored. First two pitches miss. And there's a walk. Wallace draws the one out walk. And that brings up number four, Bryson Baker. So Baker after the walk to Wallace, for the series, four of Bryson six. Baker comes to the plate. Here's Bryson Baker. And Baker looks at the first pitch. And Baker, high fly ball. And that's out number two. Baker lifts the ball up high left field and Dutch ranges over to make the grab. Two Dutch with the out, nine, two Dennis away. Ruley. And Dennis Ruley is at the plate for Resmondo, specialty tank, Worth. This the potential to be one of those all-time great games. And we're certainly glad that you're with us Aboard on U8A.com, your official site for the 2009 Men's Major World Series, presented by Bush Light. Wallace is on first. Bryson Baker retires. Ruley stays perfect on the season. And Ruley is going to draw a walk. As he draws the two out walk. Making way for Andy Purcell. Purcell so Andy Purcell comes to the plate. Seven for the series, six of seven. He's got two home runs and a team high ten RBI. So there's two away here in the bottom of the first. Rismondo is up by one. A called strike. This one lifted into right field. That'll be a base hit. And the bases are loaded. Jeff Wallace to third. Bryson Baker to second. Dennis Ruley on first. Or excuse me, Andy Purcell on first. And here's B.J. Falk. Falk of the play with the bases loaded, trying to enter this one run advantage for Resmondo specialty tank worth. 
The winner of this game takes on the Long Haul Bombers. There's a called strike. Hit right back to the pitcher, the throw to first in time. And that retires the side, only one run. And inside the park home run by Don DiDonatus, the difference so far in this game is Mondo up by one. Here in the bottom of the first. But they do get one run on two hits. They strand three. We played one. It's a 1-0 ball game here in the after one. We now go to the top of the second for Goulash, Poplin, and Roberts. TNR Stucco, Rich Goulash. Goulash batting 857 in the series, six of seven. The 2009 He's Men's Major World runs. Series presented on U-Triple-S-A.com is brought to you in part by Worth, Mikan, Combat, TPS, Nationwide, Easton, and Boomba Sports. Here we are in the top half of the second inning. Rich Goulash set to lead things off. It was a quick inning for TNR Stucco after Maddox bounced into a 1-6-3 double play, but Goulash is going to start the second inning with a leadoff single. Goulash continues to swing a hot stick. Leadoff man aboard. As Mato is up 1-0. And that brings up Randall. And inside the park home run by Don DiDonatus, the third, the difference in this contest. Batting four of six for the series. Bernie Gunther and Matt O'Hare are doing everything for you right now. Not sure where the rest of our crew is. But we'll do the best job we can as Randall Poplin, a base hit back up the middle. Poplin and that's back-to-back -back single. singles for TNR Stucco. And that brings up Dustin Roberts. Dustin Roberts is at the plate. The pitch, and it's lifted towards right field. And long run for B.J. Falk. Bases Three are loaded. In a row, and we have the bases loaded for TNR Stucco. And they put up back the to back to back singles. Brent Griffin. Griffin batting five. And eight Goulash to third. Series. Poplin to second. Roberts at first. And here's Brent Griffin with a chance to give TNR Stucco their first lead. Of the contest. That one hit right by, back up the middle. Bobby Hughes tracks Stucco it down, and TNR Stucco ties this game at Goulash one apiece. An RBI up. single for Brett John Griffin. Dutch. And John Dutch is at the plate. Poplin to third, Roberts to second. And this one is lifted into center field, a base hit, and it's going to score a bunch of runs. That's what we refer to as a base-clearing triple. And 
Tianar Stucco is up four to one. Thanks, way for pitcher Oscar Shipley. Still nobody out. It scores Poplin, Roberts, and Griffin. Dutch is on third. Here is Oscar Shipley. We see him coming to bat. He also pitches for this TNR Stucco squad. Pitch to Shipley, missed outside. Hit on the ground, this is gonna score another one run. It's five to one in favor of TNR Stucco over the number one seed. Very early in this contest, but give Oscar Shipley credit. His ground ball for an out allowed Dutch to score. And here's Troy Nance. Brings up Troy Nance. Not sure what's happening with Rick Robertson. He hasn't came up to our booth yet. Hanging out downstairs. You can see him on that shot. He's lined up with all the bats that have been tested. Driven. Towards center field and on the run, Bobby Hughes with a brilliant play. Bobby Hughes goes all out to for out the number run. two. They retire the fly ball of Nance. There's now two outs for Brian Arnold. What a defensive play. Here comes Brian Arnold to the plate. Rosbando trying to end this threat. Back to the pitcher. Andy Purcell to first, Purcell side retired. But what an inning it was for TNR Stucco. They score five. They're up by four. We head to the bottom of the second. Five to one. TNR Stucco is in the lead. They strand nobody. They've got a 5-1 lead going into the bottom of the second. Do up for Resmondo or Hughes, Rainwater, and Martin. Bobby Hughes leads off the bottom of the second inning with a high pop fly to Branch in center field. Branch in center squeezes the high fly ball of Hughes for out number one. 
That brings up left fielder Brian Rainwater. That brings up Brian Rainwater. Also with three home runs in the series. He's driven in seven. Rainwater down the line. And it falls in front of Griffin for Rainwater a base hit. With a rope to right field. One out and a so that brings up for Todd 15, Barton. Todd Barton. Mondo trails Barton by four. Six of seven in this year's World Series. And it is worth noting, Todd Martin yesterday, with his six hits, moved into second place all time in the USSA World Series for a number of hits. He needs one more hit to tie for first of all time. Martin draws a walk. Second place all time hit leader in World Series history draws the one out walk. And that brings up first baseman Howie Krause. That brings up Howie Krause. So, what do you think, Bernie Gunther? So far, a good ball game. David so Donatus popping on the headset since Rick Robertson's downstairs. He still seems to be down there. He's protecting that wall of bats. It appears every bat has been tested prior to the game to alleviate controversy. On the ground, could be two. And it is. Brilliant play to end the inning. Six, four, three, and that's an inning ending double play. Resmondo blanked in the bottom of the second. TNR Stuckos up by four here on USSA.com. For Resmondo, they scored none. They strand one, they get one hit. We now move to the third where it will be the top of the order for Stucco and Branch, Maeve and Maddox. Got there. Jason Branch Jason leads Branch off the inning. At first base credit. And he's retired for the second time throw. today. Just get Branch on a bang bang play. And then our Stucco Mabe. Mabe is up first. by four, five to one. All five of the runs came in the top of the second. And here's Mitch Mabe. Maddox to follow behind. Mabe had a single in his first at bat. We welcome those of you just joining us. You're watching the USSA Men's Major World Series on USSA.com, presented interruption free by Bush Light. And Mabe, a base hit there. Into left, Brian Rainwater tracks it down. Mabe stretches for two. 
May pounds a hole on the left side, drives the ball through. He's a Respondo's one lucky on that one didn't go into the and dugout. Brings up 22, Tim no, Howie Krause with a nice diving Manus play there to stop second. them from the ball Remember going out of play and advancing an extra team bag. For the Class A World Tournament. Tim Maddox with another runner in scoring position. TNR Stucco looking to lead by five if Maddox can get a base hit here. Obviously, if you're TNR Stucco in this position, you got to continue poking at him and just hit further one of the, the gap. That's what you want to do. Bobby Hughes tracks it down. Mabe comes around to score on the RBI Maddox double by Maddox. In Mabe with a sharply hit ball off to left center field. And that makes Obviously, like we seen last ball. night, Rosmondo can put up Kula. a big number at Kula. any point in time in this game. So TNR's really got to take advantage and put up as many as possible as they can. Paul O'Leary back on camera at third base, so we'll see whether we can get you a little bit of essence of the crowd. Matt O'Hara up here in the behind the dugout camera, or behind the home plate, I'm sorry. Into right field on the run, B.J. Falk. Foul ball. Hey, Larry. Hey, Larry, how you doing? Yeah, but Paul is the one that was getting you some great shots of the ladies that have joined us in the ballpark tonight. I hope that that's something that you guys enjoy at home. They started 3-0 before falling to the eventual champion, GTL. In the championship of Six to one with Rich Goulash at the plate. And Goulash on the ground and it gets past the glove of the middle infielder for Resmondo, Bryson Baker. Might have to go E10. Goulash is aboard, Maddox to third. Here's Randall Poplin. Matt O'Hara over here continues to poke me in the side. He really wants an opportunity on this commentary. But well, we hope that uh, we'll have some relief work before that happens. <laughs> Maddox comes in to score. Goulash to third on the RBI by Randall Poplin. Feisty fellow, ain't he? Well, we're having a great time here at the ballpark, 7-1. We hope you're enjoying it as well at home. Dustin Roberts is at the plate. Roberts looks at the first pitch. We'll be back 11 a.m. tomorrow. Off the glove of Andy Purcell. Throws to first, and it's in time. Nice stretch there by Howie Krause, who reached up and brought it down for out number two. Roberts retired 1-3. Andy and Purcell getting a lot of action here in the beginning of the game. He is. Makes things easy on the bat tester. If they've already been tested, no reason to retest them, right? Exactly. As you can see from this angle on the camera, they got a swarm of bats down there that they've confiscated through the course of the tournament. No, I think the ones on the left are the ones that they're going to pull off, actually. That's the ones that they, they pre-tested prior to the game, and that's where they're pulling them from. Across the diamond onto Hops. Dennis Ruley retires the side. Two and a half in the books. TNR Stucco's up by six. It's seven to one here on USSA.com.
for Congo looks to respond with the top of the order and Gina Nautilus can all have a hold of Don DiDonatus will lead off the bottom of the third. Rick Robertson, welcome back to our broadcast booth. Quite busy the last three hours. He did a nice job, I might add, with the home run derby. We enjoyed your coverage from up here. Thank you very much. Had a good time. We crowned a new champion, Timmy Coco. Don DiDonatus into right field. Griffin under it. When we take a look at that uh, shot from the pitcher, we see a bunch of bats lined up on the left side, and that's the bats that have been tested right before the game. Is that correct? That's correct. Teams are allowed to send their bats to be checked. They don't go back in the dugout. They must hit with these bats the rest of the game. Uh, I guess if there was some bat that you really were desperate to play with, you could have put it out there or asked to have a test before you go to the plate, right? Yes, there's no, once you get your bats tested prior to the game, no other bats can come in. Greg Connell into center field in front of Branch. There's a base hit. So I believe Rosmondo had 15 checked and TNR Stucco had 17 checked. <coughs> Excuse me, if one breaks or has a problem, you know, that bat will, it'll stay in the pile, but they only use out of that pile. So what it amounts to is it keeps any other bat from coming into the game. That's what we would call being proactive, right? Trying to take charge, do some things. Our attorney and executive director and staff members. Jeff Wallace is at the plate. It's seven to one. TNR Stucco on top of Rismondo. And Wallace has a base hit. Greg Connell will turn the corner and head to third. And Wallace aboard with a single. Runners at first and third, one away. And the pound for pound best hitter in slow pitch softball, some call him. Bryson Baker. And Bryson Baker draws a walk to load the bases. So Jeff Wallace will advance the second. So the bases are loaded. There's one away. We're in the bottom half of the third. TNR Stucco leads seven to one. Dennis Ruley is at the plate. Bases are loaded. Resmondo trails by six. And here comes Frank Webb. Didn't particularly like the call. Better be careful. There's no arguing balls and strikes.
Dennis Ruley gives this one a ride. Dutch is on the run, and he tries to lay out, but the ball way in front of him. Bryson Baker trailing Wallace. He'll score, and Ruley is in at third with a triple. A three RBI effort. John Dutch with a gallant effort. His dive was just a bit short. It rolls to the warning track. Rattles a bit, comes around, and Ruley's in at third. Three runs in, seven to four. And here's Andy Purcell. Andy Purcell fouls this first one away. Nice crowd this evening for Home Run Derby as well as they were in for the long haul Dan Smith game and they stayed now for TNR Stucco and Rismondo. Andy Purcell hits it towards the gap. Branch is on the run. And that one's going to hold up just enough for out number two. But it'll score the fifth run of the contest as Ruley tags and he scores. So that'll go down as a sacrifice fly for Andy Purcell. And there's two away. That'll bring up B.J. Falk. B.J. Falk, second place in the home run contest. Received $500. Tim Coco received a thousand. The pitcher Shane Spicer, the big cheese, received 500 for pitching so well. You call it pitching well if you throw that many home run balls. Home run derby. I love guess you them. do, right? <laughs> B.J. Folk with a base hit. I got a chance during the home run derby since you were down on the field doing the broadcast to go over to ESPN and some of those home runs. They had it uh, 440. They're actually testing the same technology that they used in St. Louis for the home run contest here tonight. And uh, they had a good time with it for sure. Was I pretty close on my measurements? You were pretty close. Sometimes you're a little short actually. They had when it went halfway up that berm in left field, it was over 400, and I think that it may have as much to do with the hill being a slope. Just uh, the same thing as we see Bobby Hughes lock, launch this one into the night. It's the same thought as uh, at least what I found out from my dad. When I'm going out golfing and you have a green that is up, if you thought you were hitting a five iron, you may need to hit a four iron, and you gotta hit one more club. So because it lands even that one on that hill, they were marking those at about 400 yards, and especially 400 if it was getting halfway up, or 400 feet, excuse me. Right. Well, that was the toughest measurement we took this morning because we measured from an approximation, and I think I said that was 380, 385 maybe, so. And if you're halfway up that hill, the ESPN technology had us over 400. Well, this one is long and it's deep. And it's gone. That's over that second wall. I repeated that so many times tonight over the yellow brick wall, and I don't know what they had that measured at. But I it's said about it was, 440 or so. And I had it at 460, so we're really not too far off. I mean, my measurements weren't exact. So back-to-back -back jacks. They promised me that that was accurate. There, that they weren't sure on all the technology, but they were sure that the distance was correct. They still had a lot of trouble as I probably saw when you watched that home run derby of that yellow line following the ball. Exactly. But I tell you, you watched that last home run, Matt O'Hara has really become a pro of following the ball, has he not? Yes, indeed. The rainwater was deep over right field. <clears throat> and that's back-to-back -back jacks from Bobby Hughes and Brian Rainwater. And Rismondo now moves to the lead. I think things have settled down as far as checking the bats and what you get to hit with. I believe we'll see both teams relax and hit the ball. 
change normally from TNR Stucco. They started Oscar Shipley tonight. Todd Martin to center field. Branch has it. That'll end the inning. But a big inning for Resmondo Specialty Tank. They tack on seven. They're up by one. We head to the fourth here at Champion Stadium. Everybody know. John Dutch draws a walk. Talking about the Hall of Fame, you know. Yeah, we have. He never gives us any headway on when we're going to be back on the air. Well, we have Andy Purcell, Dennis Ruley, and Coach John Rector from Rosmondo will go in. And I'm trying to do some interviews with them. And our assistant national umpire in chief. Dale McGregor will be inducted as well. Oscar Shipley at the plate after Dutch drew a walk. TNR Stucco will see whether they can oh bounce my. back. Shipley able to draw a walk as well. Two walks in a row for Andy Purcell. Here's Troy Nance. TNR Stucco. Led by as many as four, or excuse me, they led by as many as six. Troy Nance, player sponsor. Hit on the ground to center field. Bobby Hughes tracks it. Dutch comes in to score, and we're tied at eight. So there's nobody out. There's runners at first and second. Oscar Shipley at second. John Dutch over at first. Top of the fourth, 8-8. Eight, eight. It's 10.03 p.m. on the clock. And this is the last game of the semifinal winner bracket games. Long Hall waits to play the winner tomorrow in the finals of the winner's bracket. Andy's struggling to find the plate. He's already walked to this inning. And he's going to walk the bases loaded. Cannot afford that in slow pitch softball. Three walks in an inning. Let's see if my averages stay the same. Nine out of ten times a walk will cause a run to score in that inning. And John Rector asked for time. Gets a new ball from the plate umpire, Chuck Doc Beckwell. Down at first to Prada, Arkansas, Jason Oberlag. Out of Florida at second is Mr. Dwayne Posovich. Down the third baseline, walking his way back, Mr. Tony Walzak. 
Now, Rick, just one last question to clarify on all this bat testing. I'm going to assume the rest of the weekend this was, is going to be, I guess, the strategy, for lack of a better term, prior to the game? Yes, they'll test their bats prior to the game. They'll all be placed here. The only exception is that field 27, when we play tomorrow, the same rules that apply today, if you hit a home run and hit a pitcher, then we'll bring that bat over, over here, here to be tested. Right. Because once these are out here, they won't even be tested anymore. There's no need to. Jason Branch with a base hit. And it's going to score at least two. Branch with a two RBI double. And, and TNR Stucco has the lead once again. They're up by two, 10 to eight. Those walks have come back to hunt Andy. Mitch Mabe, he's two for two, two singles in this contest. Mabe, the second baseman, he's hit the ball pretty well all weekend. Mabe lifts it towards Brian Rainwater and left. Arnold will tag and score, and it's 11 to eight. And that is the first out here in the fourth inning. Stucco answering that seven with four. Rosmondo has the hammer. And I guess the problem at the end of the day is these bat testers are so darn expensive. They're multi-thousand dollar equipment, and that's why you just can't have one on every field, right? Well, the machine that we have currently here is pretty expensive. Now, they're to make a unit that I believe is going to cost around $300, and teams and directors will be able to buy them. And you can test your own bats. Then we shouldn't have the issues here. Once again, Andy's struggling. Tim Maddox is at the plate. And he walks to first. And that's a fourth walk of this inning. So Rich Goulash will come to the plate. The veteran first baseman made a, has made a number of nice plays on one hoppers over there at first, scooping them out. And he lifts this one towards right field. It'll score another run, I would assume. B.J. Falk tracks it down, and Branch drunks in to score. Talked with Jackie Hayes, one of the coaches for TNR Stucco between games. From a small town in Virginia. Says about 100 people have been over to his house watching us on live here on USSA.com. How many people did he say? Approximately 100, he said. Wow, so we're at 780 right now. We can tack on another 100 from that? Sounds like it. Because obviously uh, this only tracks computers. It doesn't track how many people are watching computers. That's part of the problem that they always have with the Nielsen ratings. As Randall Poplin is going to fly out, I would think, to end this inning. Nice run there for Brian Rainwater. Maybe up to like a 1,000 people watching tonight. I guess we forget on how many people are watching at home, right? Exactly. Well, stay with us on USSA.com. we got a great contest for you. TNR Stucco is up by four. 2009 Men's Major World Series presented by Bush Light.
Howie Krause leads off, bottom of the fourth. TNR Stucco is up, and Howie Krause has a solo home run. The Moose lands it deep over the U-Triple-S-A banner, some 384 feet. Feel like you're in the home run derby, right? <laughs> Almost. It's 12 to nine, and we go back to the top of the lineup. I'm sure you saw it down below. Don DiDonata starting the game off with an inside the park home run. That was pretty wild. Oh, ripped it right down the line, never hesitated, sliding into home. It shoots it down the line. Just foul. Man, was that close. TNR Stucco got to this game with two 18 to 17 victories. They beat Northwest Combat in their first game, and then they beat Gene Shop by the same score of 18 to 17. Rismondo won their first game 17 to 9, and then they put on a hitting clinic last night with a 36 to 4 victory over GTL. Didonatas on the ground. Ooh. Mitch Mame that was an knew easy it. play. Well, Mitch Mame knew with the speed of Don and Didonatas, he had to get rid of it quickly. He tried, wasn't able to make the throw. Therefore, Don Didonatas to third is in it first with a single. So that's the first out of this inning. Oh. oh no, excuse me. I don't know what I'm thinking. Well, I know. It should have been the first out of the inning. Like I said, tough play for Mitch Mame. And there's runners on the corners. Branch had trouble with that one in center field. Canell drove it hard and took a wicked hot branch, able to knock it down and keep it in front of him to keep Didonatis from scoring. And it also kept Canell over at first. There's nobody out. Runners at first and third. 12 runs in for TNR Stucco and only nine so far for Rosmondo. Here's my office mate, Jeff Wallace. He was in charge of Slugfest this week. Maybe Dave can enlighten us. Are they through with Slugfest now? They are. Last day was today. Back up the middle, there is a base hit that'll score a run. Jeff Wallace with a single. Twelve to ten. So did not us. Moves in from third, Cannell over to third from first. Wallace drives it right back up the middle. And it is 12-10. There's a pitch driven deep. Left field and gone. A home run for Bryson Baker and Resmondo specialty tank is up by one. Bryson Baker getting the pitch he wanted and drives it deep over the Disney Wild World of Sports sign. And it clears the fence easily. They have matched the five runs that Stucco put on in the time in the top of the fifth. And Ruley's the batter. Thirteen to twelve. Both teams scoring five runs in this fourth inning. Shot 
Shipley wanting the call, but it was not a strike. Once again, pitches it deep. Ruley, the opposite way, and it gets over the head of the right fielder, Brent Griffin. A triple. I don't know if you saw that, Bernie, but Brent Griffin was playing quite shallow in right field, and Ruley popped it right over his head and hustles all the way into third. So he sits there on third. There's nobody out. The pitcher, Andy Purcell, comes to bat. And here comes Tiny Taylor to talk to Beckwell. And he says, no, Tiny. Telling you just what I told Frank Webb, go back in the dugout. There is no arguing of balls and strikes. It's clearly written in the rule book. I believe they each have their free pass of the night, Bernie. Andy Purcell with a runner on third. And he hits this one into right field. And that will score a run. An, ex an excellent piece of hitting by Andy. I believe that's his 12th RBI of the event. He leads the World Series in RBIs. And he's over at first, and there's still nobody out. And Coach Tiny Taylor gathers the troops. So let me catch you up on what's taking place today. Taylor May defeated Combat USA 15 to 14. They will now play at 11 a.m. tomorrow. And I believe that's the first game we're doing tomorrow. I think we've mentioned that before. I think that's what you told me. First game at 11 a.m. tomorrow. Damian Smith. We may be without David D. Donatus. I think we're just informed that could be too early for him. <laughs> Dan Smith will play tomorrow at 5 p.m. The loser of this game will play at 3. B.J. Falk gives this one a ride deep into the night. And that one is gone. Just like he did in the home run derby, that ball clears the bullpen, middle of the parking lot. And that takes Rosmondo to a 16-12 lead. And still nobody, nobody out. out. Bobby Hughes at the plate. Oscar walks him. Bobby Hughes hit a home run as last at bat, as well as Rainwater. Rainwater at the plate. And Rainwater gives this one a ride. Is it back to back for him? Yes, indeed. Indeed it is. A home run for Brian Rainwater. That's another two run shot. Lead now 18 for Rosmondo, 12 for TNR. There's still no one out. And this time, Tiny wants to talk to Chuck Beckwell. And we move back to action. Uh, 
10 run inning here. And finally, out number one. Little pop up by Todd Martin. Right behind first base for the first out. I'll try to give you the schedule once we make three outs for the morning. Howie Krause is at the plate. As we get closer and closer to crowning a champion for the MUSSA Men's Major World Series, the showcase of slow pitch softball. Got to protect that voice, Rick. You got a big day on Sunday <laughs> as the main MC. Yes, sir. I'll go home and get yourself uh, hot water with lemon. I think that's I've worked with Dick Vitale a number of times, and that's one of the things that he likes to use. See if we have some of that in my condo. Howie Krause draws the walk. Don DiDonatus coming to the plate with a runner on first. Rosmondo's extended that lead to six. I wish I was. Eighteen to twelve, only an out. I believe Dean announced has scored two out of three times. He's been on base twice. I thought he drew a walk, but instead he's going to go back into the batter's box and try it again. Just a bit anxious on that pitch. Lifts this one into center field. Branch is under it. And Didonatus retired for out number two. Oh, don't go in the dugout. Get the bat. Need that bat. Need that bat. Need that bat. There we go. The bat would be forever banned from the game, I guess, right? I don't think you could bring it back once it enter, enters the dugout. Well, I guess this might be the solution at the end of the day. Hit on the ground. This should end the inning. Throw to second. And that will do it. But a big inning. Double digits for Rosmondo. And they're up 18 to 12 on a beautiful night for softball in Central Florida. A good looking crowd on hand. Umpiring crew real busy as we begin the fifth inning with an easy out. Brent Griffin coming to the plate. Griffin. 
Well, we really hope you have enjoyed our broadcast. We'll take the fact that we've had, uh, I think, over 700 people the majority of the day watching that you have. And uh, we'll be back tomorrow morning. Set your alarm clocks. You can watch some college football. I'm sure we'll be watching some college football as well with uh, the beauty of ESPN 360 here in our booth. LSU taking on Mississippi State. I know. You said on the field that it was tonight. I was trying to remind you. It's yes. only Friday. It's I not was a Saturday day ahead. yet. I just had to pick at Brandon Murray. One more day. Is he, did he go to Mississippi State? Well, he's from Picayune, Mississippi. Oh, my goodness. I have been to Mississippi. I've been there quite a few times. And let me tell you, flying into the Golden Triangle Regional Airport, it's quite a sight. John Dutch in the left field, and this one's definitely going to fall into the bullpen. So Griffin made the second out by landing a bullet right at Ruley. They snagged it for the second out. So we're two outs, nobody on. And John Dutch. And we are in the top of the fifth. I guess Steve Saluch can go home now that the bat testing for the game has been done, right? They're not testing anymore tonight. It really seems like it's the simplistic solution at the end of the day. And I guess uh, being my first year, you guys have tried this before. Hit well, into center field, and it's going to one hop in front of Bobby Hughes. Well, we haven't done this exact procedure. In the past, we would check bats, put a sticker on it. If the bat didn't have a sticker, you couldn't hit with it. And I'm not so sure. But yeah, they, they did check the compression on all every bat before they played. But these players find ways to roll the bat, put the sticker in the bathtub and cold or hot water, and it comes off with a hair dryer. So. We've tried everything. We think we're moving in the right direction. So hopefully we can make this game as fair and as clean as possible. Hey, I can't blame you there. Popped up. This will end the inning. Resmondo still maintains their lead. They're up by six. We'll be right back after this word from Easton. You're watching the 2009 USSA Men's Major World Series. Hey, this is Brett Helmer with Eastern Sports. I'm Brian Getting ready to drop some bombs with the 09 Eastern Batline. The truth is, there is a difference. The difference is Eastern. The truth is, I hit bombs. <laughs> The 2009 USSA Men's Major World Series presented by Bushlight is brought to you tonight by Worth, Mikan, Combat, TPS, Nationwide, Easton, 
and Boomba Sports. We welcome you back to Disney's Wide World of Sports. Jeff Wallace will lead things off. We're in the bottom of the fifth inning in an 18 to 12 contest. Bernie Gunther, Rick Robertson, and our entire U-Triple-S-A crew. We've been working hard. Believe it or not, only a couple of people bringing all these games. And uh, we hope you have gotten a chance to enjoy the broadcast no matter where you are in the country as Wallace leads off the inning with a base hit. Jeff Wallace normally hits it as hard as anybody in the game, and he did so right there, Bernie. It was a rocket. 8 o'clock in the morning, Johnny Blaze will play Blitz Watanabe. Here in the field 27 is Gene Shop and Suncoast. 9.30 in the stadium is GTL and ONS Pives. Taylor Made will play Bryson the winner. Baker into the night and gone for a two-run home run. And Jeff Wallace is excited. That's an easy walk back to the dugout for him. Just turn around and take a leisurely stroll. That gives Rosmondo 20, TNR 12. And as I was saying, Taylor Made will play at 11, and they'll take on Johnny Blaze and the Blitz winner. Hopefully, if any of the coaches and players are listening, we want you to show up early so we can test the bats. Test, not the test. Have, and we don't want to have to interrupt the game, the flow of the games. Bernie, you understand what I'm saying? Oh, I, I understand, absolutely. So hopefully we can. Dennis Ruley, he has a home run, and it's 21 to 12. That hits up halfway on the berm. That should be pretty close to a 400-foot shot, according to Disney's or ESPN's, ESPN's technology. technology. They so. claim that it was correct. Hey, who's going to discount what ESPN has to say, right? Well, they're the king of the uh, sports world. In their own minds, they are at least, right? <laughs> sure. The worldwide so. leader, self-proclaimed. And Bernie's been talking about he's not going to be here on Sunday. And you will be in Gainesville, Florida? Gainesville, Florida, working for the SEC. So it'll be all right. We're in a palindrome situation. I've been waiting to say that. I don't know that we've been in a palindrome situation this weekend. You know, I think you're correct, Bernie. Here we are, 12 for TNR Stucco, 21 for Rismondo. And we're in game 21. <laughs> How about that? I don't think the score will end up this way. That's my guess, but. No, sir. There's a nice overhand throw. Think they're gonna start doing it that way? Well, Mike Rose chooses to throw and warm up quickly. He only gets three warm up pitches, that's the rule. They should not be allowed to throw the ball to the second baseman or shortstop like that. That is against the rules. Gotta get on him. It's tough late at night when you come in off the bench. Maybe he should have went down the line and taken a few warm-ups in the bullpen. Just so you know at home, just like yesterday, you know, many of these games have already been archived. It's more of a matter of getting the people that are higher up in U-Triple-S-A to move the links to the site where you've seen them so you can watch and relive all the exciting moments of today's action. And the good news is you'll be able to fast forward through what was about a 10 minute delay in the long haul Dan Smith game and find out what happened in that thr thrilling conclusion if you'd like to relive all that action. Of course, we'll see you down on the field for the home run derby as well. Wow. Well, the change has been made. Rose is in the pitch. Shipley's come back to catch. I believe Troy Nance is. That ball's hit. And that ball's gone. Andy Purcell continues with the hot bat. He's been a tough out. 
So far this week, Andy Purcell leading in RBIs. I want to say he has 13, leads the series. That's another shot halfway up the hill. Our technical advisors are getting tickled in the booth. They always are. If there was a way to separate Matt O'Hare and David DiDonatus, I think we would do it. Just oh, yeah. isn't a possibility. They're joined at the hip, but they certainly do a great job for us up here. I think my, uh... <laughs> See, he mutes me whenever anything oh, is Oh, BJ's uh, hit it hard. BJ oh. hits this one right at the wall. What a grab there for Griffin. Griffin turned around, still able to make the catch. That's the first out of the inning. Rosmondo has a 10 run lead. There it is. Oh, what a catch. I was able to see it again in the booth. Great defensive play by Griffin. And there's one away here in the fifth inning. Rick, you're always uh, excited about what happens. David DiDonatus always keeping us honest. <laughs> Bobby Hughes works for a walk. So there's one on here in the top of the fifth, 22 to 12. That ends the Palando palindrome situation that we were in. <laughs> Brian Rainwater, the batter. There's one out, one runner on. It's 22 to 12. Rosmondo with the lead. And we're in the bottom half, the fifth inning. Rainwater <laughs> showcasing what he did in the home run derby. He draws rain when he hits it that deep. And rainwater from Warner Robins, Georgia. Twenty-four twelve, twelve run lead. We've reminded you before the run rule is thirty after three, twenty after four, and fifteen after five. Look at those fans, they're loving every moment of it. <laughs> You get to see everything on delay because we watch everything here live and it's kind of a little bit like what we have in television. It's a little bit of a delay before it comes your way here in the booth. Rick has got uh, the monitor where he's just a tad bit behind. There they are. Oh, <laughs> look at that crowd enjoying their time. Paul O'Leary doing his job with a money shot. That's why they pay him the big money. Todd Martin, and that one is going to get over the glove of Dutch. And he has a double. That ball took off just a little bit from John Dutch, unable to make the catch. Rolls to the 385-foot marker in left center field. And that hit right there puts Todd Martin Number one in all time. You triple and look at that sportsmanship. Everybody congratulating him even on the yeah, even DNR the Stucco in. side, and they're going to throw the ball back in. He is the new leader for the all-time hits in the all-time history of U triple S A in the Men's Major World Series. Quite a feat for Todd Martin. That was hit number 232 in his career. He passes Ron Parnell. Lifted in the center field towards Branch on the run, and it's over his glove. That's going to score at least a run. 
Well, Martin returned to second. He was not sure if the catch was going to be made. So he took two steps back. He still was able to come around and score. So it's 25-12. And the big moose, Howie Krause, is over at third. Still only one away. They're back to the leadoff bat of Don Dinanis to third. And we're two runs away from a run rule. And there's only an out. And I'll tell you, as Bernie said, what a class act. All the TNR Stucco players can Seems like a great bunch of guys, that's for sure. Well, they'll battle with you tooth and toenail. And as we said, they had two one run victories, 18 to 17. Both games prior to this. Rosmondo looking to take on long haul. Don DiDonatis, and oh. it's gone. Oh. And that will do it. The celebration begins in the stands. Celebration on the field, and it is a final score. So tomorrow at 7 p.m., the finals of the winner's bracket will be Rosmondo versus Longhorn. And everybody else has to play and try to catch them. Should be exciting. They fit right in the bracket where Worth is. So Rosmondo, sponsored by Worth, will take on Long Haul. Well, that concludes our coverage of the 2009 Men's Major World Series tonight presented on USSA.com by Bush Light. Also brought to you by Worth, Mikan, Combat, TPS, Nationwide, Easton, and Boomba Sports. We will be back tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. Eastern. And Rick, we're looking forward to the second to final day of coverage here on USSA.com. Yes, indeed. Saturday morning, 11 o'clock, TaylorMade. They will play here against the winner of Johnny Blitz and I mean, Johnny Blaze and Blitz Watanabe. That's our first game tomorrow in the booth. So good luck. Thank you very much, Bernie. It's been a Thank joy. you, Rick. Great day of action. Until tomorrow, we hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. For Rick Robertson, Dave DiDonatis, Matt O'Hara, Paul O'Leary, and our entire USSA crew, Bernie Gunther saying good night. From Disney, enjoy the rest of your evening. We'll see you tomorrow right here on utsa.com.